Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry reveals the moment he knew. Given the surplus of news about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle these days, it's tough to remember a time when they weren't making headlines. That being said, they haven't actually been together for a super long time, especially compared to the long courtship Prince William and Kate Middleton had meeting in the early aughts and getting married in 2011. Harry and Meghan met on a blind date in 2016 at Soho House's Dean Street townhouse in London. Even though their relationship moved quickly, the first date wasn't completely smooth, according to an excerpt from the book Finding Freedom. Harry quickly realized that impressing Meghan was going to be tougher than just giving her one of his big smiles. Harry allegedly said to himself, I've got to up my game here. And apparently he did since they reportedly had dinner the next night. After dining at Soho House two nights in a row, they switched things up a bit, enjoying a night in at Prince Harry's cottage at Kensington Palace. Six weeks after meeting, the pair traveled to Botswana. Three months into their relationship, Harry was the first to say, I love you, which Meghan said back to him. From that point on, their relationship moved forward full steam ahead. In November 2017, they announced their engagement, a year and a half after meeting. The couple got married in May 2018 and welcomed their son, Archie, in May 2019. Despite some first date nerves, they seemingly clicked pretty much immediately. But when did they know their romance was the real deal? By the second date, Prince Harry was smitten. Going from a first date to a second date within 24 hours is a definite sign that date number one went pretty well. However, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's second date was apparently the most pivotal one during their early courtship. According to an excerpt from Finding Freedom, the couple's second date also took place at Dean Street Townhouse. Apparently, according to Book, Harry knew they would be together at that point. Supposedly, the royal thought that the suit's actress was ticking every box. A friend of the couple claimed, almost immediately, they were almost obsessed with each other, which sounds right given the fact that they got pretty serious early on in their relationship. Even so, Harry and Meghan's relationship wasn't actually super public right away. Instead, they took some time to get to know each other in private, dating rather secretly until they felt more confident that they had a future together. During a 2017 Vanity Fair interview, Meghan said, We are two people who are really happy and in love. We were very quietly dating for about six months before it became news, and I was working during that whole time, and the only thing that changed was people's perception. The actress went on to insist that nothing about her changed. I'm still the same person that I am, and I've never defined myself by my relationship. Prince Harry had Meghan Markle's back immediately. Although Prince Harry and Meghan Markle decided to keep their relationship quiet at first, Word got out eventually with many media outlets reporting on their relationship. Unfortunately, it wasn't all favorable or even fair. As a result, Harry felt compelled to step up and speak out in her defense, officially referring to Meghan as his girlfriend in a November 2016 statement that he shared via his communications secretary. The statement acknowledged that Harry was aware that there is significant curiosity about his private life, adding that he has never been comfortable with this. It emphasized that he's rarely taken formal action on the very regular publication of fictional stories that are written about him. However, he felt that the media went too far with commentary about Meghan, claiming that she had been subject to a wave of abuse and harassment. The statement noted, Some of this has been very public, the smear on the front page of a national newspaper, the racial undertones of comment pieces, and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls and web article comments. Additionally, 
Harry was worried about Miss Megan's safety and is deeply disappointed that he has not been able to protect her. He issued the statement in hopes of preventing further damage. The very public statement served as another sign that he was in the relationship for the long haul. It's not as conventionally romantic as a dinner date, but Harry made it clear that he wanted a future with Megan. We just want to annoy you for three seconds. That is, please click the subscribe button to get more attractive videos from us. Your support is also the motivation for our team to produce better videos with more quality content. And now we do not let you wait any longer. Let's start the story. Everything we know about Harry and Megan's new biography so far. Finding Freedom Harry and Megan and the making of a modern royal family is the about to be released, soon to be blockbuster new bio that will take us through the past four years of life with the formerly royal couple, including all the true scoop on what really led up to makes it and the fallout that followed. As a matter of fact, while the upcoming bio of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex won't be released in book form until August 11th, it's already being serialized in The Times and The Sunday Times. Subscribers are eagerly snapping up every last detail of the couple's courtship, from that very first date where Harry appeared to be in a trance, while Meghan asked a friend, Do I sound crazy when I say this pair of legs? The story is told by the royal editor of Harper's Bazaar, the 33-year-old Omid Scabi, and his co-author, American TV producer Carolyn Durand. The biography is expected to be controversial. The Times compares Finding Freedom to Andrew Morton's 1992 bio Diana, her true story, a book that outed the whole Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles scandal, and portrayed the beloved Princess Diana as a deeply unhappy woman who struggled with bulimia and had made at least one suicide attempt. This new bio, however, has no such smoking guns, and in fact dispels some of the rumors that would have made Meghan out to be the Yoko Ono who broke up the royal family. Instead, it's some of the other royal family members who are in for a share of unwelcome scrutiny. While Prince Charles doesn't come out looking so bad, one source says that William and Kate come across as quite cold at times and unwelcoming, and the book is expected to deepen the rift between the two brothers, now more than an ocean apart. A source said, the palace are worried about the book because they know what really happened behind the scenes, but added, frankly, they should be breathing a sigh of relief. It could have been a lot worse. Still, the Queen is expected to be rather upset by any revelations that are due to be aired. Yet, another family friend characterizes the book as something that is going to open old wounds at a time when everyone wanted to move on. Both Meghan and Harry come out looking more like victims than villains. While neither Harry nor Meghan contributed to the book, the story it tells nevertheless comes across as deeply sympathetic towards the couple. As Scobby said about his work, it's not all from Harry and Meghan's perspective, but I do think that for the first time we do actually get to hear what's going on in their minds. He claims to have interviewed over 100 sources for his material, although The Sun says that the 320-page book is based primarily on both authors' experience as members of the Royal Press Corps. That being said, their fellow journalists don't exactly come off smelling like English roses in Finding Freedom. As the book reveals, both Meghan and Harry were made to feel extremely uncomfortable by the fact that members of other royal households, whom a friend of the Sussex couple referred to as Vipers, were leaking stories about them to the press. How Finding Freedom came to be written. Stabby and Durant have each been covering the royals for over a decade, but about the time Harry and Meghan tied the knot, they decided to join forces to start working on what would become this biography. Both began keeping detailed notes about the couple, and at that time, the co-authors had close ties to senior aides at Kensington Palace who helped them get an insider's perspective 
that few members of the press corps are privy to. The aides were aware that a book was in progress, but they saw it as being a useful way to counteract myths and rumors being spread about the couple by some of the sleazier media outlets. Once things started heading south for Harry and Meghan around the fall of 2019. However, suddenly these sources were no longer so eager to cooperate with the couple's biographers. Things undoubtedly got even tougher once the whole Nexa thing blew up, but Scobby and Duran persisted, and they're proud of the resulting book. As Scobby told the Times, I think the timing of this book has worked out really well because we've been able to follow what has been a momentous seismic moment for the royal family. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.